Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 26 of Talking with a Dad. 26 is a big number, Steve, right? It's uh, Steve's age. Also yes. comes to be the six-month anniversary of this this fine show here that you people like to listen to. And by you people, I mean a great group of, of 60 subscribers at this point uh, tune into the show. And, and all of the audio listeners out there, we appreciate all of you people. Steve, what does six months mean to you? What, what does this mean? What is this? Uh, it's a big commitment. It what is a commitment. A, what does it mean? Six six months is uh, half of a cake. Someone else is going to get that reference. Zach won't get it, but he'll look it up later. Uh, six months of not giving up, not killing each other, not allowing the debates to disintegrate on air into like complete name calling. We beat Borderlands, disagreed on some games, played a few good games of Destiny and uh, what was the other one? The Star Wars Battlefront. Six months of coming down to this basement. And this other guy's house using his computer without getting caught. It's been a good run. So I'm I probably mean, gonna get six months is really the 20, 26 episode is really only uh, the podcast. The uh, channels have been going on for a little bit longer than that now. Uh, we don't talk about the channel. Just like we don't oh, talk okay. about all right, all right, all right. We, don't, we, don't, we don't talk about hoagies and whiskeys and we don't talk about. What was the other thing we were trying to I, get? I, um, I don't know. And I don't, I don't want to recall. <laughs> we're trying to forget no, something. I really I, don't I've want to be having, part of it. <laughs> I've been having fun for six months, man. It's a uh, been a good time, actually. How about you? What yeah, you I've been having a good time. I've been having a good time over these last six months here. It's actually one of my favorite nights of the week, to be honest. Hey, amen. Uh, I forgot to bring. You know, let's get into our little mini filibuster here. Your boy Brendan Schaub is going to get into it with Luke Thomas this Wednesday. Everyone tune into the Luke Thomas show. They're going to go at it. What are they over, do? Uh, over what? Over the fact that the event's canceled. No, 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 no. So apparently, uh, hey, if you guys don't notice about me, I spend a lot of time on YouTube just peeping. He is the Eddie Bravo there. of the show. <laughs> like, I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm always got my finger on the pulse. And uh, apparently, Brendan Shaw made some comments about uh, the pandemic, about how it's not that big of a deal. And then the internet turned on him, as the internet usually does. Should, outrage. as the internet should. And uh, so Luke Thomas was streaming today. And. Uh, <laughs> They brought up to him. They're like, are you going <laughs> to like, out of nowhere? Some dude who managed to get through all the comments in that chat. <laughs> that's the one Luke picks because it's an all caps. Like, are you going to check your boy on what he said? about the pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so Luke Thomas went through the brief uh, day history of how they were supposed to have a show going and it never got confirmed. And then two minutes later, he was like, oh, I just got a confirmation. We're doing our show on Wednesday. All so, right. Tune in to Luke Thomas. We'll get to see Shab trying to defend his point. Not, you know what? I've never heard the man debate before, but you have a lot of faith in him. So I'm going to see how whoa, he does. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I have a lot of faith in him as a general podcasteer. Um, I don't know how, what my faith level is as a full-on debate with Luke Thomas, who is fairly articulate and seems to be able to get his point across pretty well. Uh, and all this and stuff extremely that, intelligent. In all this, well, I, I, okay, I don't confirm that or deny that anywhere. Um, no. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Steve did that purely to ruin my entire monologue here. Where, of, the, of the set of topics I was trying to trying to get through to get the show on the air today. So six months, big time. Um, we've made a routine out of it, right? We're uh, we're pretty committed at this point to take a we take a global pandemic to make this show stop at, at this this point. Fuck, it's a global pandemic going on. Um, that, that we're in the bunker, it. right? Was, now. Yeah, yeah, we're in the bunker. <laughs> Uh, oh, easy, easy, easy. We do not want the algorithm striking this shit. We won't get a strike, but we don't want to get it removed before it's even up. All right. Ah, so, we won't get removed. Uh, my guy over there at Google, uh, Jimmy John, he'll help Jimmy us out. Jimmy John Google. D don't worry. Jimmy John Google will, will help us out. No worries. One other so new thing going, going on. One other new thing going on before I, as I cut Steve what's off going? here again on what's purpose here. Uh, we got some new graphics laid out. Um, kind of upped our game on all platforms. Let's be yeah. fair. Um, we have an Instagram that we're going to yes. be much more actively using. You guys are going to see a lot of memes on there. So we've been doing a good <laughs> job with, with hilarious memes uh, of all variety on there. And I like that. Um, Meme we're also going to get to see when videos come out, there's going to be a title card produced on there. Um, yep. it is now yep. going to be the I'm trying to think, uh, thumbnail for everything, right? I think I like it a yeah. lot. It's very business card esque, which I thought was uh was neat in the way that it did it. There's a little subtle nuances yeah. in that um in that though, so right. I, I don't know if you've noticed a little subtle nuances. Have you? Have you no Have you noticed a little subtle nuances in it? Are you talking to me or to the, to the no audience? to to you to you? <laughs> Steve. <laughs> I'm like nodding my head like okay, I don't ever talk to the audience. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> All of I, my I, monologues are to you. <laughs> I've, I've noticed uh, the subtle nuances in there. Yes, I, I see the bridges and the gaps, and yeah, it looks really okay. Good, in man. the in the fine print between the lines. Okay, yeah. so I get that. Yeah, um, I, I see that. That uh, I will actually, I have to check. I was going to ask you if you were going to remove it or if it was removed. I see that our original background is still over there in the lower right corner i believe i feel, I feel like i should that? leave that there as an homage to yeah, the beginning yeah, yeah, at the yeah. moment um yeah. that'll be changed in eventually you guys, in case you guys don't know zach just girlfriend me like he was talking for about 15 minutes and i was nodding my head and he was trying to figure out how this was things <laughs> like so what tell me what you think about what my mom said no <laughs> i was actually i was honestly curious you saw because you know on the bottom of it really low on the bottom i added the uh the instagram and the twitter logo with what our handle is on each of them um I don't know if you noticed that or not. So that's mm -hmm. there. So it's a little a little free advertising across the board yeah. uh, is what I was trying to do. Uh, I should yeah. add the Facebook to that. Now we now do have a Facebook page. You can look us up on Facebook at Talking With A Dad. Um, yeah. Same as our Instagram and our Twitter and yeah. our YouTube. Once we get 100 subs, I could change our YouTube um, link to YouTube.com slash Talking With A Dad. Oh, so okay. once we hit 100, that. That, that'll be the, the official link for everything. Um, I think we've secured it on a few other accounts too, if I remember correctly. So we have a few accounts linked directly to that. But yeah, yeah new graphics kind of signifying maybe a season two of the channel. Um, moving on, growing up, going forward. Yeah, I like all yeah. that. Are we so, do, did we get did we get renewed for season two? Or? We got renewed for season two. We got green lit. Netflix green lights everything. So uh, uh, you can check us out over on netflix.com slash talking with a dad. We'll be on there. Speaking of Netflix, thank you, Hulu, for sponsoring this, <laughs> this recording. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even get to the sponsors yet. This is pre sponsors. <laughs> this is pre sponsor role here. Um, yeah. So that's, that's cool, man. So we get to 100. We get that. We get that. Also, I want to thank the people who've been downloading on Podbeam. I don't know who you are, but you are there. You're yeah, there. <laughs> and we, we appreciate you. Uh, I was thank just looking you. at the Podbean statistics earlier. We're a little, we're a little plateaued there. So yeah. we're going to have to work on that a little bit. But that's it. That's, that's kind, of, uh, kind of it. We plateaued on YouTube for a little while. We're kind of soon to be some sowing some growth there. Uh, Twitter's growing a little bit. Instagram is always doing well. Steve's doing a great job over there. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. All that's right. Uh, that's all what right. we got. That's that's all I got. That's well, thanks monologue. for stopping in, everyone. That's the show for you. <laughs> Six uh, months. Good luck. <laughs> Zach, you got a topic here that I've, I've been trying to wrap my head around. Right, I'm looking at it, and it's like it's like when you get a text message from someone, you don't want to take it out of context because you don't know what the tone and the temperament is behind a text. You like, can always assume my text messages are aggressive. By the way. Every time you send me what's up, that's why I respond, well, what's up? <laughs> like, I respond with the exact same energy, but capitals, because I'm a beta male. I want to know correct. what you, what do you mean by media consumed during the quarantine? Get it, get, so give it to me, bro. What's I, going I, on there? Notoriously, don't watch TV, okay. don't consume any media, right, other than, like, uh, Twitch or music in the background, right? I have been watching TV shows on oh. Netflix. Whoa. In between jobs at work. Okay. So I've been consuming some stuff, and and while I'm playing games and, and stuff, now, I've been kind of up in the up in the game. What new have you watched during the quarantine? That's that's what I'm trying to get to. That's what I'm trying to get to. Yours might be yours is usually more nuanced and and more d deliberate. Mine have just been picking random shit and enjoying it. So, so here's the thing, right? So we, have, me and my wife, my, my wife and I, I should say, have actually been rewatching Blacklist. Okay. And we've started off because it's something we can put on in the background. And if it's too crazy, we can turn it off when the kids, if they actually start paying attention to the TV, because usually they're consumed with their own play. Right, so right. we're we're just about to bang out season one of Blacklist. We've also been reworking our way through The Punisher. My wife is a huge fan the Punisher? Of, uh, es of, of espionage shows. And The Punisher on Netflix, believe it or not, okay. is not just a shoot 'em up. There's actually a great story. That's very espionage born identity to it. So if you like that type of stuff, you might want to check out the first season of The Punisher. I have not watched it yet. I told you that I've I deaded the entire first season of uh, Altered Carbon, which I thought was actually... You ever start something and it's like, this is not looking good. Episode one, I'm like, this is going to be like some sci-fi. Sci-fi channel is my baseline, like... That's how bad a show's going to be. Should it be, <laughs> no, come it be on, on History channels, <laughs> History channel's not that? <laughs> no, no. Definitely sci-fi. Even though I know there's some fans of sci-fi shows there. But I watched the first season of Alter Carbon, and I forget the actor's name, and he's also in Suicide Squad and that show The Killing. But this guy grows on you because he's so smooth. And by the time season one was done, it's ruined season two for me because I like Anthony Mackie. Plays the Falcon in uh, the Avengers movies. Also 
had an acting career prior to that, but we're not going to remember any of the serious <laughs> acting. No one, let's be real. No one's going to remember the serious acting he did before this. Just like Chad Boseman. You can't name the movies he did before Black Panther. I can, but you can't. I don't even know who Chad so Boseman is, so... He plays Black Panther exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I saw the show. I saw the movie uh, on a night in North Carolina, yeah. and I was like fairly drunk, so I don't remember it very well. <laughs> see that? See, I see you drinking a Corona there. But yeah, I'm watching the second season of Alter Carbon, and uh, it's I don't want to ruin it, but Anthony Mackie is in the show, and now it's like it's it's hard, right? Because I got used to one character, one actor, and I got to re- get used to another one. And uh, okay. so I've been watching that. And you know me, I'm always on YouTube. So I've been watching some, some really way out stuff. Man. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah I, know you, on YouTube. I know you said we were Rainbow Six uh, <laughs> tournament the other day. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, we were up with the kids at like, uh, like seven in the morning. Santana had obviously been up two hours prior to that. And the first thing I start my day off with is like, oh, Rainbow Six League today. I watched like 10 minutes of it. I was like, and I can see why that's getting dead. Bored, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, Boring. Like, Those guys are incredible. Do not get me wrong. Those great, guys are very great good. Great just gameplay. Can't. Just, yeah. It just can't. It, it's not a running gun style. Also, you know what else I've been watching is uh been catching up on some uh, some other stuff, some of my theological debates and stuff like that. And then every once in a while when I see President Trump pop up, I'm like, well, gotta tune into that. <laughs> Who knows what he's about to say? And it's never always it's never good. It's- Let's be fair, <laughs> it's never good. It's always some fucking bullshit. It's never even accurate, usually. It's, it's, it's been crazy. it's been fairly inaccurate, and a lot of people are actually even contemplating stopping his his like addresses to the nation because they've been so inaccurate and so even potentially harmful. It's and see someone else said that, but here's the problem, right? So you stop airing it on CNN and NBC and, uh, and MSNBC. Fox has all the ratings. He has a Fox and OAN, and then some a third one will pick it up, Us. and then you know. <laughs> yeah, and we'll be broadcasting that shit real quick to get followers. <laughs> so I've been watching a lot of stuff. Actually, we don't watch a lot of news right now Sad. because, yeah, it's uh, it's not good. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> like, yeah. they try to do they, they try to do feel good segments, and it's nope. like. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like no, but we know what else is going on. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's it. Actually, uh, the next we tried to watch Harry Potter. Uh, I, I like I, the series. I like the series. Listen, I, I've tried, man. I'm, I'm going to try one more time before I die and I leave this earth. I'm going to try one more time to sit down and watch this, but those movies are really long, dude. And there's there's a lot of them. There's, there's like yeah. six, six or seven <laughs> movies. They're all really long. You have to get through the first two. Yes. After you get yeah, through the first yeah. two, it picks way up. And you get yeah, to like the Goblet of Fire, like all of that. Yeah. Like it's really good. So yeah, it pops awesome. off in like three through ninety three, but like the first two are a little slow. You need the first two though. You one hundred percent need that. the first two to set the set the mood, but right. you have to get through the first two. And then after that's really good. They're good. They're good movies. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in Stevie's house there. Um, I thought it's potentially. Thought I heard a small child running around. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, but that's it. What about you, man? What have you been watching in between work shifts and stuff? Oh, man. I, gotta, I should probably look up the name of the show. So I started off with Norseman. I, said, I recommended that you watch the Norseman. It is a right. funny Viking show. Very good, actually. I think it's it's, it's a very good show. Um, then I watched the, the Tiger thing, um, <laughs> which was a terrible ending. Don't <laughs> don't fucking watch it. It was it was a, an ending that honestly made Game of Thrones look good. Um, I... I- I, I can't I can't do it. That's a real that's real stuff. You're talking about it like it's fiction. That's I know. <laughs> that's happened. what makes it great. Um <laughs> what else did I watch after that? I watched a car show. I think it's like Russ Masters uh Road to Redemption or something, I think is what it was called. Um Yeah, I, I watched that. That was really good. Uh if you're like in a you live in a good, wholesome Christian family, don't watch it. Um no. there, there's only really one reason I watch it, and it's very unholy. Um <laughs> Why? What? Well, now I gotta know what's the so, movie you watch. Th- there's a woman in the show um, oh. who is actually a legit engine specialist, right? She's very, right. Good, very good with engines, but is a total thirst trap. And there's at ah. least <laughs> one panning ass shot every four and a half minutes, and it looks ridiculous. And it, honestly, like I had to do some research because I thought she was a plant. 
I thought they planted her there <laughs> for that reason. Turns out, master mechanic. Very, very been good. A years. very, very good mechanic. Not even been with that shop for years, but she's done a lot of successful things in her career as a mechanic. But I was like, this is so ridiculous because it's like so blatantly obvious. And she's like, right. she's very attractive, right? Like, I feel like if you're going to be a woman in that field, you kind of have to be, right? To get, to get respect one way or another. But super attractive. Whoa. And like, no, nah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very male predominant field that doesn't respect women um <laughs> hashtag don't come after me come after zach <laughs> whatever so I, I watched that and then um i watched uh i watched a documentary series which is apparently pretty old is uh america's book of secrets that's where i oh, got yeah. the um that's where i got the, <laughs> the random alex jones sighting after i thought he was canceled off everything but this this one's still up and it's hilarious because like you hear the voice before they come in and i'm like ah oh, it's alex jones <laughs> like i recognize the voice from like a mile away uh and now i am on to what i can only think of as maybe the single best docuseries i've ever watched uh and it's formula one drive to survive if you okay. are not interested in racing whatsoever the show is still fascinating um, just what the drivers and the teams and, and owners and everything go through to make Formula One happen. Um, it is incredible. So I, I've been watching that um, and I've almost binged two seasons. I think I have uh, one and a half episodes left in like 24 hours. Are you actually into Formula One? Uh, not before this show, but after this, I will I will be watching. I'm not much of a race fan. Uh, I like rally racing um, a little okay. bit uh, on and off road rally. Um and like drifting, I, I would want to go to a drift event, like a Formula Drift or something. But after okay. this, I will be watching uh, F1 for sure. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things I'm not into, right? And I probably will never be into it. I can say that at the age of 38. I know what I like and what, what I don't like. But uh, I got a lot of respect for the drivers, man, because there's so much more that goes into that than just driving around in a circle. And I hope they highlight that in the documentary because I remember watching something on ESPN. So that's NASCAR. That's NASCAR. Oh, what are, what are you, Formula what are you One. Watching? Formula One is different than NASCAR. What is it? Educate me, man. Formula, what is Formula so One. Do you know? Do you know what IndyCar is? So it's it's open wheel racing. Formula One is the highest level oh, of, oh, of this open wheel racing. What do you mean open wheel racing? So open wheel open wheel is when your wheel is not contained inside of a fender or a, a, okay. a wheel well. It is open uh, wheel. Right? It is all op all exposed. Uh, just look up an okay. F1 car. Just look up uh, S uh, Sebastian Vettel's F1 car. Um, That's what I'm doing right now. So F1 racing is worldwide. There's only one race in the US. Uh, they're everywhere. Okay. Monaco Grand Prix is, is one of the biggest oh, ones. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, I got you. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into this. Other than NASCAR too, right? I can respect the NASCAR racing because of, of what they what their bodies endure for those two and a half, three hour races of 150, 160 uh, degree weather yeah. inside those cars. Um, but F1 racing is very cutthroat. There's only 20 drivers in the world that are F1 drivers, right? Okay. At any given time, there's only 20 drivers in the world, and there's only one person who wins, really. There, I looked at the 2018 or 2019 season. There was only there's so there's ten teams. They all have two drivers each, and only five of those teams got a victory over the 21 races. And 11 of those 21, Lewis Hamilton won. And Lewis Hamilton, okay. is, he's the best driver in the world, potentially the best F1 driver ever. He's won. Uh, him and his him and the Mercedes. There's a second half to that name. F1 team. Um, have won six straight championships. Okay. They've won six in a row, and Hamilton has won five uh, first place racing, or uh, I forget what the, the racer, uh, the number one Holy crap, driver. he's black. Uh, yeah, he's from he's from Britain. Um, oh. Lewis Hamilton. He's British. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, he's like the, potentially the best F1 driver ever. Just mm. wins every fucking race. It, it's ridiculous. Uh, and... And the first season didn't have him. Sebastian Vettel is like the other guy who wins like the other half of the races. Uh, basically, he's very good. He won four championships in a row with Red Bull, like 2010 and 2014 or something like that. Um, him, uh, Vettel and, and Hamilton weren't in the first season of the show, right? Everyone else around them essentially was in the first season of the show. First season does really well, is really successful to see mm -hmm. how big it was. Uh, Hamilton and Vettel are in the second season of the show. It's very interesting on what the Netflix ratings did to get those guys in on the show. Um, well, I hope this is the thing they need to uh, to keep it going because uh, I don't think Netflix is going to be around much longer, bro. I know you disagree with me on that, but it's it's a uh, 
It's got some holes coming into the ship, but that's got nothing to do with media consumption. I'm surprised you was, haven't watched V uh, Ford versus Ferrari. You seem like you would. Watch I have that. not watched that yet. It's on the list, um, but I, I have not watched that yet. Let me know. I'll let you log into my Google Play so you can watch it. For, uh, I mean, you Netflix will pay for it. On you? Netflix has 167 million subscribers. Not so going it's anywhere. It's a see. It's a sink and ship, Zach. We're not going to get into this. We're not going to do this. Twenty tonight, Zach. billion dollars of revenue in twenty nineteen. Listen, we're, we're not. We're, we're going to keep it cordial. We're not going to debate in front of the good people tonight, man. I'm just telling you, it's a sink and ship, and I'm right about this. But yeah, I'll let you. <laughs> I'll let you check it out because I want to see what you think about that movie because you are a car enthusiast. Like you're actually one of those guys when you start talking about cars, my eyes just don't glaze over. I'm like, oh, okay, this is something he's interested in. I'm going to listen very much. And. uh I wanted to ask you one quick question, right? Speaking of cars, did you get your new tires? No, I haven't done that yet. Now, what what type of tires are you going to get? So the tires, I'm really thinking about getting the Pilot Super Sport uh, PS2s. I think is what they are. Or no, maybe they're not. Maybe not even Pilot Super Sports anymore. Um, let's see. Yeah, the Michelin Pilot Sport PS2s. Sorry, I was thinking about getting those. They're uh, they're nice tires. They're really really nice road tires for um summer. But see, wheels, that's what, like rims, I'm not sure what I'm going to get yet. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. You said a bunch of words together, buddy, right? <laughs> like, I don't know what any of those words mean. I, I understood Michelin. <laughs> that's so, the fat guy. <laughs> the Michelin Pilot Sport um, are, are like generally regarded within like the, I guess, racing and like uh, car enthusiast community as like the best tire, if not like tied for tied for one and two. Okay. Okay. You plan on doing a lot of street racing, bud? You're gonna be out there at the Home Depot in the town over. You're gonna be you're gonna start doing that stuff, aren't you? Show up, no, racing no, no. a bunch that's of high school kids. That's definitely not gonna happen. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I wanted to talk to you about. So we both really we're talking about media consumption. We both really enjoyed Joker, right? We went and saw that movie. I watched it again. Didn't like it as much. Watched it a third time, and I was like, oh, I figured out why I didn't like it as much because the uh, the mystery wasn't there. I remember we were, you know, I was very tense when we saw it in the theater, and then the second time I knew it was gonna happen. Third time, I could just sit back and enjoy the cinematography, the music. Loved it again. I want to ask you a question, man. Okay. In the spirit, in the spirit of that, now you know they're talking about doing a second one, right? Yeah. They're talking about everything's delayed, so nothing's happening. Right? You know, everyone's just talking at this point. Would you go see the second? In theaters. In theaters, assuming sure. we can leave our houses again. Sure. Yes. Yeah, I would. Now, would you, would you go see it if they kept everyone but Joaquin? If he pulled nope. the thespian up? <laughs> nope. I'm out. I'm out. I thought Joaquin is what made that movie. No one else was, was any good in it. Um, Actually, recently I sent you a uh, a Joker little, like, I guess a little yeah. uh, inside baseball Joker thing where when he's looking, sitting in the, the clown fucking emporium, I don't know what to call it, um, locker room, the clown locker room. <laughs> And the the, <laughs> the the lights shine in, and, and it's um it looks exactly like Black Panther. Yeah, yeah, that I, that was I cool, that right? Was I thought that was hilarious. Uh, see, the, the reason I asked that also about the second Joker is I uh, wanted to give you we we failed our first challenge, right? I want to start a new challenge. Uh, this is completely no. off the top of the head. We're talking about media consumption, but this is not going to cost us any money, uh -uh. and we don't have to do any reading. I want to challenge you to find the 12 worst movies on Netflix and watch them. <laughs> okay, hold on. All right, let's see. I have to watch the 12 worst movies? Well, yes. That's, you're worst. committing 24 hours of my life, potentially. <laughs> probably about nine, they're probably about only 90 minutes each, and they're probably all Hall Hallmark movies. But Okay. Let's see if we can get a comprehensive list. But we would have to... Hold on. Before we commit to this, we have to find... And commit to the twelve movies because right. we have to I watch right the exact same movies. We have to watch the right exact here. same movies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got it right here. Just, just, I'll just talk. read them out. Just read them out and see if I can guess. Oh, yeah. Here's what you know what a better game is. Read the title of the movie and let me guess what the plot is. <laughs> okay. This is gonna be a better right. game. This is the new segment of uh, talking with the dad, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening, by the way. Father of the year. That is about a man who murders his wife and then turns it around <laughs> as it turns out he didn't murder the wife and be, and gets his kids through Harvard. I'm not going to tell if you're right or not, so when you watch the movies, you can go back and reference this. <laughs> the Kissing Booth? That's about a, a murderous clown who lives in a kissing booth. <laughs> the Outsider? 
the outsider. That's the dog who lives on the outside that turns bad and murders his family. <laughs> uh, sex tuplets? That's about John and Kate. <laughs> or the crazy uh, so lady who got the artificial insemination and kept getting it. <laughs> I think it's about that lady. <laughs> it's about that lady. <laughs> I'm going to kill Steve in this segment. <laughs> I'm trying not to make the people feel like I'm sick. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Number five, silence. <laughs> okay. Number six. <laughs> the last laugh. That's about, that's a Joker knockoff. That's the Korean Joker. Uh, Polar is uh, number seven. That is the knockoff Polar Express, where it not instead of really good kids, it's all really bad kids, and it goes south quickly. Let's see. Oh wait, uh, they skip number eight for some reason. Okay, Weird. number eight was so bad that I couldn't even put it on the list. Got it. All right, we're just gonna skip to number nine, the ridiculous six. Oh, that's the Adam Sandler movie. Yep. Okay. <laughs> you gotta you gotta sit through it. Not <laughs> the. Dude. <laughs> the the do over. <laughs> this do-over? is where it starts. Is it also it Adam Sandler? To, <laughs> yeah, it starts to wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> <where it's> like, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Rebirth. That's number eleven. Uh, Rebirth. I don't. I don't yeah. want to guess what that one is. That that only goes to a dark, dark place. Game over, man. Is that also Adam Sandler? No, man. But it's got the three guys from Workaholics, so that bums me oh, out. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to move past that one very quickly. True memoirs of an in- international assassin. That doesn't sound as bad, but if it's not a female lead, I probably won't watch it. <laughs> the coin heist or coin heist? Oh, That's is, that, is that about the heist of the uh, the fancy coins from Belgium? Uh, uh, I just made that up, dude. You don't have to read. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm reading. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> That's it. So that's it. I'll send you the list. Barring none of these movies that have been removed from Netflix. Yeah. Send that's me our the new, list. That's, that's our new challenge for the month. We're we're starting off the month pretty fresh, but you, it's it's not reading a book, right? Only idiots. Read. That's what I'm saying. That's what was wrong with that first challenge. I've, only only idiots and serial killers and single men read books. Oh, okay. Thanks for including me on the list. The serial killers <laughs> don't do get a bad name. <laughs> so we we if do you think you can make it through all these movies if they're still available? <laughs> I don't know if I can, dude. I'm gonna have to find a ridiculous amount of stuff to do. Like a whole, like hold on, how are these all 90 minute movies? So I can get through a few of these in a day. Listen, this is your shelter inside watch list. I have to do. I do have to go to work two days next week. So, oh, are you actually going in? I have to go for two days next week. Yep. Oh, what are you doing, man? Uh, well, uh, you know, we have one of us as a representative there in the building every day. Uh, and Thursday, Friday, my uh, my card got called. So, okay, all right. So you're just gonna be in the building by yourself, right? Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty creepy in itself. Some psychopath running around. You're in the building by yourself. Sounds like a teen horror movie already. You got <laughs> your little, you got your little work tie on. You're like sticking your head out. Like, is there anyone out there? <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Is there anyone else in the building with you? There will be some other people, but like no one in that quadrant of the building for sure. Yeesh. Man, well, at least you're going out into the outside world. Let me know what's going on out there. You I will the- not. I, I won't be able to report <laughs> back next week. Friday, uh, talking with the dad is going to be talking with the dad. Uh, it's just <laughs> going to be Steve. <laughs> This is going to be a dark light where your camera was and the guy who killed you sitting in your chair. All right. This is a great show, Steve. Go ahead and give me your address. <laughs> I'm coming over next. Does he have a ring down around here somewhere? There's lines and pictures with like string everywhere. What, is, what the hell? Am, I thought I was the crazy one. Oh, man. Games played. Yeah, what, what? What, have, what have we been playing recently, Steve? This is really just a ploy to get you to talk about Rocket League in a positive light. Oh, okay. So I did have. So listen. My wife knows this about me. I like having fun, but sometimes if I don't want to admit I was wrong, I'll do anything not to have fun in the situation. Like the music could be great at the party, and I'm just like, freaking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Food's hard. <laughs> <I'm moving. laughs> but me and Zach played. Zach and I played uh, Rocket League the other day, and without even having a drink, 
I actually had so much fun. I was embarrassed by how much fun I had. <laughs> he was <laughs> laughing so much that he had tears in his eyes. <laughs> the second game was a little bit more intense because I'm like, oh man, like Shane's actually really good at this game. Like I thought it's, he was. It's incredible. <laughs> Way better than me. And it's it's fun. It's a fun game. It is man. very like, fun. And it's not like mindless fun. Uh, you know what my biggest thing about playing with you guys, usually playing games with you guys is. I just don't like that feeling of like, hey, help me. I'm pinned down. Please come save me. Like, oh, like, but with Rocket League, it's like, oh, it's okay. Steve's riding up the ceiling again. He'll figure that out in a second. <laughs> I, get a, <laughs> I get a good couple of assists. So that was fun. I've uh, been replaying the division, as you know, you stalker. <laughs> Got a couple of games in there, and I just recently went back to Ghost Recon. I'm going to tell you why. Because I paid for it. That's, That's fair. Why. That's fair. <laughs> and like, I find I, I, I was trying to stop, not do that thing I do where I look up how to get past a certain point on YouTube, but I finally just sucked it up. And I was like, look, I've been trying to parachute on this one island for like, you seven have, hours. <laughs> like, dude, I've been jumping out. The, I jump out the plane. A friggin' drone shot me while I was coming down. <laughs> <laughs> and then I finally just watched the video and I realized a guy who does the most tutorials on this game is like, yeah, all you guys trying to do it all sneaky. Like, he's like, nah, forget that. He's like, land that helicopter right there <laughs> and kill everyone. Work. The first time I did it. So I've been playing that, man. I've, I've been having fun. I feel like that game, since it's gotten the patches, is doing a lot better. It's less choppy. There's a little bit more content now. I'm still playing the main game, but I can see more people are having fun with it. I don't go into the uh, the PVPs anymore. Like, I, I've learned my lesson. Like don't the people do it. Who, yeah, the people who play that game, uh, PVP, they're not playing around, dude. Like, <laughs> like no, they, because you, those are the guys who wish SOCOM was still a game. They go in there ooh. and play it, dude. Yeah, did you have you ever seen the videos of guys playing teams in that? Like they're like calling out real snipes. They're like, all right, I got the guy with the baseball cap. All right, check. Copy. I got the other guy. And there's dead <laughs> silence for like thirty seconds. And then their last teammate finally chimes in. He's like, copy. All right, on three, three, <laughs> two, one. And, uh, and I'm like, that's oh, the man. <laughs> it's it's crazy, man. What have you been playing, bro? Uh, lots of RuneScape just because I can AFK it while doing other things. Um, uh, Rocket League, obviously, been playing a lot of playing a lot a lot of Rocket League. Um. <laughs> That's about it. That's really it. Really? Uh, when I dive deep into games, Steve, you know that I don't have time for other games. That was crazy. The one thing I'm going to miss about uh, the farewell to the gaming of a d- gaming with a dad, the one thing I'm going to miss is playing games. But I, I got to be honest, man, uh, Borderlands probably, you know, in retrospect, you know how you think about things in life? You're like, man, that seemed like a good idea to do that at the time. Like, I watched our first video with Borderlands 2, and I was like, man, we were full of so much hope. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were playing Borderlands 2, and then I watched one of our later videos with Borderlands 3. And it's just basically right, like, we got to get through this, <laughs> and we do that. Is it over yet? Please be over. <laughs> but I'm, su- I'm surprised, man. I, sometimes I feel bad for you, bro, because you, you don't play COD. It makes you angry. It, it triggers you. And I don't mean that in a disparaging way. Like, it does trigger you. Like, I've never seen you get as upset don't like as when you're... You were playing with uh, with dirty double Ds, and at first you seemed like you were having fun. And the next thing I know, I could hear in your voice, you're like, "Yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about. See that guy right there? I just shot three times. Yeah, he's getting back up. That guy's still moving. Oh, what? Oh, no surprise. He one shot at me though. <laughs> yep, I don't like the game. I just I don't. I think the game entirely is is just inconsistent. I've expressed my opinion of the game enough. I'd, I'd rather not. Uh... But you did have fun playing Valorant. Yeah, I did. I did have fun with Valorant. To be honest, though, I haven't gone back to it yet. Um, I've been you still have access? Yeah, it's still up, yeah. Um, oh, wow. I haven't gone back to it yet. Um, I'd want to get... I want more people to play with. Um, I don't know. I, I just... Are you entering a different it. phase of your life or something? What's going on with no, you? No, no, no. I liked the game a lot, but it's also... I find it to be a game that I probably couldn't grind all day. Um, like okay. I used to do with Call of Duty or, or Battlefield or whatever it was. I don't think I could grind Valorant all day. I just don't think it's one of those games. I think I could go in and play for an hour or two, and then I pretty much want to be done with it from there. I think that's kind of um, that's kind of where I sit with that game. I do think it's a lot of fun. I think if I had five right. or six, five people to play with, I think I would could right. play it probably all day. Um, okay. But solo, it's just not a not a game I want to commit all of my time to because it's not a game that i've i think i'll be able to be as competitive as i would like to be in it so all right let me, let me 
I gotta ask you a question, man, because you kind of ushered me into this PC gaming life. So you have, I, I have a mid tier, but worked upon to now maybe a lower high tier computer, right? I sure. put, you know, put some time into it. But you have two monster computers. Well, one is more beast than the other, and it's in, in a friggin' server case. Now that I've seen the case a couple of times over, do you feel like your computers are underutilized at this point? No, because. I built them, right? And I'm going to use them for what exactly I want to use them for. So mm -hmm. whatever that is, is the perfect amount of utilization that I want out of the computer. See, that was the answer I was exactly hoping for because I have seen people, <clears throat> you know, in my search on the YouTubes and the interwebs, get really bummed out on themselves for the $1,200 machine they built. And they, maybe they thought they were going to get into some... <laughs> get a bump they're they're gonna get into, up, that's why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they thought they were going to get into some video editing. They thought they were going to start a podcast. They thought they were going to stay married to their partner. They started <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if we were going to go with the second half of that. But, okay. So to be fair, right, I, I purpose built a computer for gaming a decade ago, right? Back when I was right. playing games, I will about to say the same amount of time, but like slightly more graphically intense and heavy than I do now. Um, what I love about my computer now, right, and, and having both of them is really nice. And I'm, I'm actually going to start utilizing the second one a little bit more, I think, um, in re editing and rendering. I, I think I'm going to do on mostly on that computer. Um, right. But any game that comes out, I play it with ease. Don't I, I do not worry about having to upgrade anything at the moment. I, I go in, I play it. That That's it. Right, that's the, that's the, the the short of it. I run Photoshop without any issues because I have been on right. the opposite end of that and run Photoshop on a computer that had no issue doing or had no um no place doing it. Right, uh, right. I video edit without any issues, render no issues. So whatever I need the computer to do, whether it's playing RuneScape, which at one point was a browser game, or right. You know the upper echelon of 4k rendering it does both and it does both without asking for more so okay that's yeah, why i don't regret and, of, and plus i sit at this computer you know on a work day like today i'll be here for 13 hours i've been here for 12 more than that i've been here for, i've been at this computer for 12 hours today what do you use the mac for that's that's just the netflix machine oh, okay uh and when i travel <laughs> i can play runescape on it Okay, okay, okay. See, that's what I like, man. So that's what I like to hear, right? So there's no regrets in the purchase. There's no regrets in the investment, right? You bought, Money. right, the first time, so you wouldn't have to buy twice the second time. I stole that from you. Yes, I know. And uh, and you also got your new chair, man. How are you liking that thing? I see it, and it looks looks nice. So it's it's really nice. Uh, let me look up exactly what <laughs> chair I bought. So if anyone wants to copy me and buy a chair, I, I do recommend it. Uh, I think it's really nice. Um, it is, let's see... Okay, sign in. I think it's the wrong Amazon password. It is. Fuck, I don't remember what it is. You should probably say it out loud so you can remember it. Oh, uh, never mind. I guessed it. Um, it. it is the. Let's see if I can get a better thing. This is, this is the tagline because I don't have like a model number. The Serta Executive Office Chair with Smart Layer Technology. Um, so the chair thickness is as thick as my hand is long from from wrist to tip of finger. That's how thick the chair is. Um, hmm. The back goes up to... Sorry, I hit my mic. I didn't mean to do that. About the middle of my neck. So it's actually pretty tall, too. Um, the only thing is, is the the wheelbase is a little bit wider, so it's kind of harder to fit in my desk. Um, desk area, because it's kind of kind of narrow in here. I fit a lot of... Uh, I'm very efficient with my space. Um, it has fully adjustable lumbar support, which is really nice. Kind of helps my back a little bit. Uh, but... Yeah, that's that's where I sit with it. It's a nice sort of chair. Paid a good amount of money for it. Not nothing crazy. You know, I'm not I'm not shopping Herman Miller here, but um, but it's nice. Herman Miller, they're very nice chairs. I, I got that reference. Very, the best. Very nice. No, no, no. <laughs> they're the best. Um, they're the number one. It's like for the like for the man who could legally kill anyone he want. Why not do it from a chair that he likes? <laughs> that is the that's Herman Miller. It's the lazy boy so, of office chairs. Let me ask a question though, man. It's like, so I noticed there are no bracing stripes on your chairs. It uh, doesn't say gamer or elite or extreme on your chair or anything like right. that. You're a, you're, you're a guy that dispels with a lot of PC gamer myths. Like, even your headphones, man. Your headphones are just normal looking functional headphones. And a replace not... ear cups on them. <laughs> yeah, I you replace ear cups. What, what, what do you have to say about gaming chairs? Now, I know you're ready for any smoke that comes your way. So. But... 
the chair that I bought was a off-brand chair from Amazon, and I really uh-huh. can't speak. Every time I've ever sat in a DX Racer, a Secret Lab, um, there's a third brand that I can't quite remember the name of. Anytime I've ever sat in the, in the upper echelon gaming chairs, I've liked them, but I also liked my chair when I got it originally too. So gotcha. I'm a I'm a bigger guy, right? I, I fill out a seat. How how does that seat hold up over a year? Right. My seat didn't hold I had my my last chair for two years. Uh it was falling apart. I, I didn't want to buy a new chair, but I had to. When I when I leaned to the to my left, the entire chair would start lifting up because the right arm rest had broken off from the, the bottom piece of what the chair what it was connected to in the chair. So I absolutely had to buy a new chair. Uh, it was actually within the first week of owning that chair. I wish I would have got something different. Uh, it was um, it had like bolsters on the side. If you were in a bucket seat, right, the things that press into your thighs that keep you in place. It had really, really, really like pronounced bolsters, which actually hurt my thighs for a long time. Um, so yeah, I actually didn't like that chair overall. Now, if I had to do it over, I would have bought a flat bottomed uh, gaming chair. Actually, probably wouldn't even bought a gaming chair. I would have bought something like this. Um, but you know, also two years difference. I have significantly more money now than I did then. So, Good point. you know, at the time, yeah, I bought it. I regretted it for two years. I stuck it out for two years. I probably screwed my back up more than what it was worth, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I bought this chair on Monday, got it Wednesday, assembled it. I've enjoyed it since. I still think that it takes a very, very special chair for you to be able to sit in it for 13 hours. Um, yeah. and not have any sort of pain in your back and your thighs and your neck or whatever it is. So I do have some pain sitting in this chair, but it is way better than the last one. It's interesting because, uh, you know, you remember how the show originally started was you coaching me through games and stuff, but I hope people are paying attention to what Zach's saying before you build that $1,200 machine. And before you buy that racing stripe chair, I want you to take a second pause like subscribe and listen to this episode (laughs) (laughs) listen to this episode again because there's a chance if you're going to spend twelve hundred dollars go watch our episode on our what was our christmas builds we both dropped high-end and budget builds that would last you for a few years mine's were the budget builds that you can leave room for improvement zach did a budget build and a high-end device that should last you for quite some time yeah check that stuff out before you purchase also his purchase on the chair itself, if you go check out the link, maybe he'll remember this uh the link in the, the description. It's a Won't good do chair. It. It's tomorrow morning. <laughs> if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna invest in the chair, look at it because I actually looked at it and I read the reviews on it, and every person from the gamer to the professional that had, was kind enough to leave a review on Amazon said the exact same thing. I need a chair that I can sit in for more than five hours at a time to do the work. And if you can find that type of quality, save yourself some money, man. Don't buy stupid. Buy right. There you yeah, go. That's all. I agree. I agree 100%. I enjoy the chair. Um, so far, I do. So it's a little bigger than what I would have liked, but it's also I have a room in the chair now. I didn't have room in my last one. Uh, so that, it's really nice. Also, the, apparently, the more expensive you buy a chair, the fucking yeah. significantly easier it is to put together. Yeah. Because rich people don't have time to think about how to put things together. <laughs> Dude, that's a poor person's problem. I, I had one <laughs> issue. Putting the chair together, uh, they had stapled in a spot that um, actually covered over a screw hole a little bit. So fucking mm-hmm. reached in there, pulled the pulled the staple out. It was just holding the upholstery on the bottom. Don't give a shit. Uh, okay. Put screw went in. Everything was amazing. Um, it took me like twenty five minutes. See, don't worry about don't worry about your space though, because your wife is definitely going to help you pick out a house that's big enough for your you know to you for your space and then you don't have to worry about or think about that type of stuff for yourself every yeah, day getting I don't married have, i don't have money for any of those i don't know what the fuck you're talking about sir that's that's what we all say before we get married but then when you do get married you'll be surprised how much more money you make dude so that's pretty that's good i was i'm gonna let you kick off the next topic because if i if i go to the low hanging fruit we've invested a lot of time in this one topic i'm very upset i'm not a, I'm, I'm very angry <laughs> <laughs> We're serious journalists here. Over at the show. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. I'll let you kick it. Man. You want to talk about the UFC? <laughs> yeah. So UFC 249 <laughs> officially canceled. Uh, the government had stepped in on Dana White and told him no. Absolutely not. Go- that's exactly that's what I've heard. California stepped in was like, you will not do that. Um, mm. And I believe also maybe above because him and President Trump are friends. Right, like no. friends the same way we are friends. 
from from what I understand. Like have conversations like randomly throughout days. Uh, right. I believe even at some level, Trump stepped in and was like, "Listen, dude, fucking hold on a month. Let's let's wait yeah. this out a little bit. Hold on, right? So." UFC 249s, no word on Fight Island, unfortunately. I think that was such a fucking incredibly good idea. Um, and the UFC is is suspended indefinitely uh, because apparently California then also went to the head of ESPN and Disney and was like, dude, yeah. you have to put a stop to this. And UFC, UFC has been suspended indefinitely. So will we see it return when the, uh, when the pandemic is gone? Who knows? Maybe if Disney doesn't like them, maybe they step in and can it. Who knows? It's then crazy. We're all uh, stuck watching fucking. Oh, you know what? I hadn't taken that from that because I listened to his Greg Agamotto thing, and he's like, you know, we ESPN Brett, has Brett been... Agamotto. If you're gonna yeah. be a legitimate journalist that is respected by the greater fighting community, Steve, you have to get people's names right. Listen Greg Ag- Agamotto is one of them. I will uh, Ariel Hilwani is another. <laughs> I will fight most of the people whose names I pronounce wrong. Br- Brandon, like, Sh- <laughs> Brandon Schwab. I, Br- look, Brendan <laughs> Schwab. <laughs> uh, I say his name correct. I'm like, well, Brendan Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did notice you said it correct earlier, and I don't think I've ever heard you say it correct before. Um, I when he was when him and uh, Mr. Akamoto were uh, were conversing. He, Dana's exact words were, you know, ESPN has been really good to us. He was like, I'm not the one that folded. He was like, but it did come from on high. And I assumed he meant from the mouse house. Uh, he said there is still going to be a fight island, that they're still doing the infrastructure. Because the one thing we have to remember, the UFC is only partnered with ESPN and Disney, not owned by those two, right? Correct. The actual, the actual, The actual partners. And so this is when it gets weird, man. And like, let me say my segment and then you correct me where it need be it, right? Not owned by those two entities, not owned by Disney, but he says they're moving along with the infrastructure on Fight Island, which someone rightfully compared to Mortal Kombat because that's exactly it, what it is. And he's like, and that's going to be somewhere where they have their international fights from now on. So there are some people who really, really, people in the fight community, combat sports mostly, who've dealt with a lot of stuff from the government and the commissions over the years. Really appreciated that Dana stood his ground, right? He also went on to say, and this is weird that he has the power to say this, but I'm sure he got it cleared as the chairman or the public face of the UFC, which he owns not anymore, any portion of it. He's like, all my people are going to get paid. Every fighter that had a contract, we're honoring their contracts. We're going to take care of these guys. Okay. That has I thought to that... be some other company stepping in because WME does not have the money to do that from what I understand. WME is a is a company that spends their money very unwisely. Uh from from all really? of the all of the readings and all of the hearings that I have heard from that in in you know business culture and stuff. Um so here's the here's the 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 tagline that I read, right? Despite plans to uh all right, despite plans UFC 249 has been canceled with all future events suspended indefinitely. Mm-hmm. Right? He is not going to put on a Fight Island and make Fight Island happen during this. If ESPN says, hey, we're not airing your events, Dana can't do anything about it. What is he going to no, do? No, let me, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me, go ahead. Let me clarify. No, he's not saying that fight, anything's going to happen anytime soon. They asked him in the future, after the pandemic, would Fight Island still be a thing? And he's like, yeah, we're still building the infrastructure. That's, that's still. So- do you know <laughs> how much press and, and how much money and stuff he gets from, from going to these cities? Right, <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. Like no one's gonna fly in, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on for a second. Once upon a time, someone said the exact same thing when the first founding mobster went to Las Vegas and said, "Hey, on this piece of sand and around these cowboys, I will build the mecca of sin itself." And they did it, right? They, you know, they did say that about Vegas and Atlantic City in the beginning. You can't do this. You you can't do this. And they they so, also said that they, they said that about those tropical islands they built uh, that the, all the sheikhs, the Muslim princes built. Do you know that place I'm talking about where they basically built islands? <laughs> you know that you know what yes, I'm talking about. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're talking about there. <laughs> yeah. Here's the issue: if you're not going to, I don't know, let's just say Chicago, right. you are not getting those people to buy your tickets. Right. If you're not going to MSG, 
you are not getting those people to buy your tickets, right? That's fine. Those events will still happen. But yeah. what is the number one selling pay-per-view and number one selling gate of all time? Isn't it Melbourne? Is it? It's either yes. Melbourne or yeah. Toronto. Those are international fights. You don't oh, have I an opportunity to break the gate record going back to Melbourne, going for Robert Whitaker's you know, title reclamation and throwing all of the Australian and New Zealand fighters on that card. You don't break that record again. You know, you don't get GSP's return in Toronto. You don't get no. that, right? You know, you don't get Khabib and Connor in Russia or right, Ireland. Right. You don't get those right. fights, right? So that's why you can't do Fight Island. Not because it's not possible, but because right. it's, it's not smart for the business. So what you're saying is, Zach, if I'm hearing correctly, is that people aren't going to shuttle in and fly planes to go to some mysterious island where they may or may not contract malaria and other exotic diseases. No, no, people are going to do that, <laughs> but you're not going to get the average person to go and do it, right? We're going, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're supposed to keep them, we're supposed to keep them <laughs> under wrap here. It turns out that you know we have some sort of backing now. <laughs> Yeah. We're gonna have to go. Anyway, the average person who would buy a ticket to MSG, even though it's you know a few hundred right. dollars, is not gonna buy that five hundred dollar plane ticket because it's a specialty plane ticket, right? You're not right. going to to Vegas, which is you know the most accessible place in the U.S. Right. You're going to some random island, which you're gonna have to go to Orlando, then Miami, then take a puddle jumper over to where you have to go. Right. Yeah. You know, there's not gonna be any real infrastructure there, most likely. You know, you're gonna have to fly in and then and then wait to get flown out or something. Like, yeah. you know, they'll put hotels there, I'm sure, in a big a big venue, and they'll do the, oh, the UFC this, the UFC that. But it's you what really is it? Do. It's gonna get used four times a year too. Like, how much money can you put into something that's gonna be used four times a year? You know what? You said something, and I don't know if you staggered. We're about to put our tin foil caps on here, folks. But Zach said something that I was thinking earlier today, and it woke me from a dead sleep. What if they did it in Cuba? But what if they did it in – no, just hear me out. You got your tinfoil hat on because you said you said Miami, and I'm just thinking, not now, but what if they did fights in Cuba? What if, Have they what never if done Dana an was, event in Cuba? UFC? No, the, the embargo was just lifted like three years ago or something like that. Yeah, People but hold started. on. You can't fly from U.S. to Cuba, but you could fly from U.S. to Mexico to Cuba. You can fly to Toronto to Cuba as well. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. We, yeah, you could very easily uh, drive from our home here in Saskatchewan to Toronto. Exactly. Right. Whatever. I, I just, I'm, this is what I'm saying. A lot of people were referring to this segment with Dana. This whole thing they were calling ESPN listed it, and I thought this was a, a hell of a dig with a partner of theirs. They referred to it as white noise. That's the lead name of the segment to describe what had been going on with Dana leading up to this whole thing. So the optics on Dana are right now that he's just a loud mouth. And this has always been the truth. But remember, this is the loud mouth that almost single-handedly created a new market, right? Like, let's think back to UFC 1 versus where it's at now. Let's think about the, the Gracies and that the original promoter for the first UFC event to where, you know, Dana and uh, what are the brothers' names again? Uh, uh, Fertitta? The Fertitta brothers, think about what he was able to do, right, with yeah. their backing. So I guess what I'm asking is, did he get stopped or did he need did he need it to be stopped? What do you think? It, this is just your opinion. I'm not putting you in a hot seat. Did he need it? So we had a long conversation about if this was a good idea or not. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think we were both very on the fence of, of whether it was a good idea or not. Both excited to see the fights, but um whether or not it was a good idea, right? I th in the end, I think it's not a good idea to do that yes. fight. So I think it needed to be stopped. Yes. Now, this does give us the opportunity to just now wait for Khabib and Tony. Right. Sure. That that waiter was bringing us the Sierra Mist, and yes. fucking a, a <laughs> bus came through the door, <laughs> killed that bitch. Right. With John Jones driving it. <laughs> Yelling, yeehaw! <laughs> Coming through the bus, right? Does does it make it more exciting for when the UFC comes back? No. And here's an issue. When the UFC comes back, NBA is coming back. The MLB will be yep. starting. Um, yep. We're going to get golf. We're going to get racing. We're going to get yep. uh, 
boxing, everything. right? Everything is going to happen. At, let's just say May first, right? Because currently the everything is everything is banned until the thirtieth of April. May first, right. everything starts again, right? We'll get maybe, maybe get some hockey playoffs because they're talking about just keeping the playoffs and whatever everything opens back up as long as it's not interfering with the start of next season, right? We're gonna get all of that. The UFC is going to be low men on the totem pole because compared to these major sporting um, organizations is the word I was looking for there. Compared to the major, major sporting leagues, it doesn't compare. No. So and I think that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to carve out a bigger spot. Like we had talked about this and it was going to be the only potentially the only game in town. I think didn't they get one? They got one card off one fight night. ESPN the fight. last one. But Bellator also, I believe, got a card off. Um, and I think it might have only been a week after the NBA season was suspended. Yeah, I will. I, did you check the numbers on that last card, Bang Jazz? If you no. don't have to look it up now, but it's amazing because I know what he was trying to do. I know he was trying to corner the market, and this was the one opportunity I think he felt to really separate the UFC and take the lead in the pack and be something that you know be available to sports fans. It just didn't happen, man, and uh. I don't think that Disney's going to spank them for this one because they are still a profitable uh, portion of their, <laughs> like they still make money on ESPN. Yes, yes, to, yes, 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 yes. You know, they still make them a good bit of money. So we'll see, man. Uh, but I, I got to be honest with you. I was not looking forward to Ferguson versus Gaethje. In fact, I felt like Tony was going to get robbed. The more I thought about him, like chances are Gaethje's going to whoop him. Because Tony's waited too long for the fight he's been waiting for. And this is this is what happens, right? He's going to get Donald, right? He's going to go in there. I had Tony Ferguson choking Gaethje to death. By the <laughs> yeah, I did too. Like, 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 just choking him to death. So, but then it dawned on me. Hold on. So I looked up the ratings. It is the lowest average viewers, uh, lowest average viewer for a card on ESPN. Woo! 672,000. Who was the headline on that card? That was Oliveira versus Kevin Lee. Oh, yeah. Kevin Lee. Oh, that's right. That was the first no people allowed. Yep, and that was on the 14th, March 14th. Yeah. And, hold on, it was at 6 p.m. Wow. And it that's a good time. Le- perfect timing. And no one was doing anything at that point. Everything kind of had stopped by that point, right? Um, yeah. Which is, which is so strange because it was Adesanya... Versus Romero also had no um had a had attendance right. I went to your house for this one, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then by one seventy, it was everything was locked up. One week later, done. Everything is gone. Yeah, you know what? Not not the hugest, not big names for the sport, right? So it's kind of like the same thing as akin to a. Oh man, I hope I get this right. So the boxing aficionados looking at the PBC uh boxing events, like they're great to watch because you get to see up and uh, up and coming talent. Love watching those, but the problem is no one knows who these people are in most sure. senses. Is it until you get to the main card? And, uh, even though we both know that that was a great fight, that was a great showing for Charles Charles Oliveira. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, like that was that was amazing considering where he's come from. But at any rate, I, I want to get off of this because we have talked about this ad nauseum. This is the last time you were here. Me and Zach mentioned UFC 249 mostly because there's nothing left to talk that about. That is not true. <laughs> That is not true. Um, there is one more fighting topic that we have to talk about. Uh, I do agree. UFC 249 is canceled. Uh, it was probably for the better. Um, yes. Let's see what, what the ongoings are with Fight Island. I predict that it doesn't happen. This is a Dana White bullshit story that he comes up with every once in a while. Um, I do believe it won't happen. Um, but here's another bullshit thing that is happening. Dominic Cruz <laughs> is now getting Harris. the nod against Henry Cejudo because Jose Aldo pulled out. Of a fight that probably won't happen, um, one hundred percent won't happen. But Tom Cruise gets the call. He's fought three times since <sighs> Cejudo made a debut in 2014. If I if I remember that that um, headline correctly, you got, yes, I believe you got it correct. Has not fought since he lost the title to uh, Kobe Covington. Has not. He was I mean, scheduled I, I, to fight. Hold on, I wouldn't have fought either. To be fair, that's an embarrassment that no, no people should have. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? Showed up to the post uh, fight presser with his head head straight up. Took it like took it like a man and uh, gave his little speech. You know, did not do the Ronda and hide his face in the pillow and you know claim medical problems or something like that. But <laughs> Dom Cruz versus Henry Cejudo. 
I'm going to try to be mature about this. Nitro, Alex, if Santana, if you are watching this, you could disagree with me all you want, but I still love you, brother. So here's what's more than likely going to happen, right? Dominic Cruz does not believe in ring rust. And we've never seen any evidence of that whenever he's come back from one of his long layoffs from a uh, from injury. And there's been a couple, man. Um, I actually think he gives Cejudo some real trouble depending on how he shows up, right? His foot movement is going to be difficult for most people. The reason why uh, it wasn't for Cody is because Cody's a boxer. You yeah. know what he's saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Cody, and, and Cody knows he's going to hit you dead. Instead of going for a headshot on all that evasion, he's hitting you in the body, setting up the headshot, which I think is what he caught him with towards the end and knocked him down either in the first round or whatever round he got knocked down in. But the wrestling is going to go to Cejudo. Problem is, Dom's got a great, and you don't see it that often, but the one guy he did KO when he came back like a beast, Dom's got a hell of a power takedown from that crazy footwork. Like, he will shoot in, and he can blast you across that cage if he okay. wants to. But the problem with this, this is, is, is... This it? isn't the conversation we oh, should be having. This is not the, the conversation, conversation we should be having. <laughs> I the know fact the that Dominic Cruz have hasn't <laughs> fought in years, and now it's just like, fuck it, I'll fight him. And then Look, comes Dana back, paid uh, me 40 bucks to amp this thing yeah, up. You gonna... $40 and a fucking, <laughs> I don't even know, one beer, right? One tiny little glass of pink wine. That's what Dana paid you. Dude, there are... There are Dozens, <laughs> I would say, a dozen <laughs> fighters that should be ahead of Aljamain of, Sterling is huge, that one? massively. Marlon Marias, Peter Yan, yeah. uh, Sandhagen, yeah. um, Rafael Sunsau. Like, yeah, Jesus, give Cody Garbrandt another chance. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Dominic Cruz should not even be remotely near a, a, a ring for a title shot. The only way oh, he man. should be is sitting in the fucking either in the audience or in, in the caster's booth. The crazy thing is, uh, Henry Cejudo also has been uh, throwing shots at uh, Frankie Edgar, and uh, and Frankie even was like, "Bro, if, if you don't, you can't get a get a partner, I'll come down there and whoop your ass." I I, I, I saw that tweet and I was like, yeah. "All right, Frankie, all right, Frankie, it's I, a lot of words, bro, a lot of words." But here's the problem, man: people sleep on Henry Cejudo, and you know why? They should rightfully so sleep on him, and I know why they do. It's because of the first win over the win over uh, the goat at that division, Demetrius Johnson. You and I both know we've said this before. I don't think Henry Cejudo won that fight. Nope. I think but, I think draws go to the champion. It's like um, ties go to the runner. Good point. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't know how Dom Cruz. I don't know. I, I don't understand the thinking in this. I, I don't know. I I don't. I, I, I the guy hasn't. And I like Dominic Cruz. I love him as an analyst. I think it's actually maybe that's where his best hat is right now. But. I don't I don't know what to do with this one because this fight's not gonna happen. I don't even know why this is a Twitter situation. And this is more cringe worthy behavior from Henry Cejudo. In fact, he's Whatever, about two seconds he, he, he's about two seconds from getting unfollowed by me, dude. Like it's just now it's starting to get a little weird. Right? You that's know, it's like thing. It's, everyone has their thing to, to stay relevant. And I texted you about another situation the other day, but everyone has yeah. their thing to get to stay relevant, especially right, right now that yeah. that nothing is happening, right? And if, if his is being cringe and his, his is just talking like third grade level shit, then yeah. then that's fine, yeah. right? I can respect I'm gonna that. Hold, I'm, a, I'm gonna hold you to the standard. The next time he texts, he posts something stupid, and you text me at two in the morning, like, who lets this guy use his phone this much? Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat that. It has that to never you happened. <laughs> it's, it's going to. So this is on the that... same line of me not caring about the the titty streamers on Twitch, right? It's whoa, respect whoa, 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 whoa. the hustle. Respect right. the hustle. Respect the hustle. Because if you if you can <laughs> if you can find a niche and you can make your money on it, and that's how you're going to exploit it, even though everyone's hating on you from the outside, cash you the did check. Say, you did say you don't believe in slut shaming the other day. I thought that was weird because we were talking about pasta, and I was like, oh, well, that came out. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like hey, a lot of things was... going on in my head at uh, once, man. That's why I start with words sometimes. One thing before we before we sign off, man. I meant to put this in the list, but it just came back to me. So, do you watch? Do you ever listen to Kenny Florian and uh, Annick uh, nope. podcast? All right. So, someone hit John, uh, hit Annick and up, and uh, whatever his name is, Annick. And uh, John they Annick. said, "Do you, yeah." They they said, "Do you think the reason John Jones is having so much prop so many problems is because possibly there's some brain damage or something there?" So he said, "You know, what? I can't answer that question. I'm not a medical and much. He's always super professional. I love that dude." Like, but you know, it's a possibility, right? So he brought it onto the show with Kenny Florian, 
and they were talking about it. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't know Kenny Florian came from a, a family of doctors, but he's not a doctor himself. He's like, you know, he said the same thing. He's like, <laughs> I can't diagnose that, but he's like, makes sense, right? One of the things that comes so, with brain damage yeah, is so, irrational behavior. Like doing, yeah, you see that a lot in thing. football players, right? You see that a yeah. lot in football players. You see it with Aaron Hernandez, uh, an old school one. Junior Seau is uh, yes. is another one, right? You see that a lot. Um, you see it in wrestlers. Chris Benoit is a, is a good a good example there. People act yeah. out until they end up not being able to act out anymore. Whether they're put in jail, um, they end up passing away, whatever the whatever situation may be. But yes, I, I I would now that I think about it, and I think I had thought I've had this thought like parallel thinking here, but I would think that yeah, a lot of it is because of brain trauma. But yeah, it started so early on in his career when he was still pretty much just a wrestler. You know, I don't know how much brain trauma goes on within wrestling. Probably a bit. I probably get mm. slammed a little bit in your head, gets jostled or whatever. But you know, I just think John Jones is not a great person. Uh, deep oh, down, I just think he's not a great person. Um, it's interesting because there's one thing uh, Florian said that I thought was pretty interesting. I was like, "Well, like John's only the most damage he took in a fight was Gus. The first time, yeah, Gus. But the first time he ever took a clean punch that stiffened him up was against Leo and Machida, and it was a hell of a punch too. But then I started thinking about, I was like, "Well, there was Gus. He took some shots against Glover. That that was the first time I saw that he had a chin because Glover sure." Definitely go go back and watch that fight. He touched him with a few punches that would have knocked someone else out. And I think that's when John started leaning heavily on his chin was those two fights. He's like, oh, I can take damage. But also in the gym, John's been knocked. Yeah, did you know this? It's a rumor. John, Rumble uh, Johnson has knocked him out in the gym, right? Not it, Rumble Johnson. Uh, 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 I was uh, your boy, Uberim. Oh, I ha okay. I have heard that. I don't know why I thought it was uh, Rumble. If it was Rumble, Rumble would have been outside smoking weed. Like, I definitely did that. <laughs> like, I knocked and killed him, and I threw a woman's yoga mat. But I don't know. I just thought that was interesting, man. John may not be the best person on earth, but there might also be another reason why he's behaving this way. Are yeah, I definitely, be it, could, it, it could be medically, for sure. And yeah. uh, the unfortunate thing is, is, especially with CTE, and I always joke yeah. and say that I have CTE because you know a number of diagnosed concussions. But um, yeah. seriously... You can't really tell if someone has CTE until the brain can be exhumed and examined. So, yeah. you know, that's the unfortunate thing with, with brain trauma is that you just never know. Right. Yeah. And, and it doesn't always, you know, show any signs immediately. Right. There is there are chances that, you know, he'll, he'll never see it. He'll never see signs or one day when he's 49 years old, takes a bump in a car wrong and, and just flips. Right, yeah. that that essentially could happen. So, you watched the uh, documentary on Aaron Hernandez on Netflix? No, 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 I don't. Oh, I didn't care about him when he was a football player. So, but brutal, brutal, shrewdest business move ever. Knew that his wife was going to get that. Uh, what do you call it when you get paid out for the rest of your life? Uh, old people get it when they leave their county jobs. Pension, pension. There you go. Yep, knew that. He knew it was the one way to get it to her, and they couldn't take it away from her. Thought that was pretty amazing. Yep. Anything else before we jump off the train here, Zach? No, nah, man, I, I think that's it. I clearly don't want to cover this other uh, topic here, so we'll get rid of it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you, just just you got rid of it. No, that's okay. That's okay, ladies and gentlemen. We, <laughs> we've enjoyed this episode 26 Listen, hold of on. Talking I, like, I, I, I won't let you disparage the two time. That's why I didn't let that go down. Right, Doc's a scam artist. That's okay. Um, <laughs> thank everyone for listening to episode 26 of Talking with a Dad. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, go follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Check out the Facebook page, brand new. If you don't like, if you don't want to watch our, our beautiful face talk, you can always listen to it in your car while you're working yeah. out. You know, very socially yes. distanced. Um, anywhere yeah. on your favorite podcasting app, other than Spotify or Google Play, uh, it's on iTunes and on Podbean, wherever they distribute to. Um, yeah. or you can just log into the RSS feed from Podbean and that's about it. Thanks everyone. And have a great day.